Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> First, I'd like to say what a great honor it is to be here tonight with you, Christiane, because you are the very first uh, broadcast, female broadcast journalist that I ever remember seeing on TV who was reporting from the ground from the most dangerous uh, points of conflict in the world. And you are responsible for making my daughters think that there was nothing at all unusual in that. <laughs> Those of us who grew up in the 60s, when the narrative of serious journalism was always, always delivered in a baritone, we knew what a big deal it was and what a trailblazer you are. Christiane is the woman who made the safari jacket <laughs> cute. So much so that poor Steve Bannon, in an attempt to be cute or to acquire some frontline authenticity, has actually copped your look. Did you realize that? <laughs> but as that crack investigative journal People Magazine would ask, who wore it better? <laughs> anyway, I'm very, very privileged to be here on a night when we honor some of the bravest people in the world and celebrate this terrific, hardworking organization whose mission it is to safeguard them and their work. Joel Simon and the committee, I, I thank you very much for inviting me here tonight. <laughs> because I get to meet my heroes. I really came here tonight to thank you. That's all, really. Thank you. Our nation turns its lonely eyes to you. You are the fourth estate. You are our first line of defense against tyranny and state-sanctioned news. Thank you. You intrepid, underpaid, overextended, trolled and unextolled, young and old, battered and bold, bought and sold, Hyper alert, crack caffeine fiends. You're gorgeous. You're ambitious, contrarian, fiery, dogged, and determined bullshit detectives. You're persevering, cool, objective, indefatigable, chronically fatigued, pharmaceutically soothed, chocolate-comforted Twitter clickers. <laughs> you are the enemy of the people. Yeah, just the bad people. And I, on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you. I was at the Columbia School of Journalism this spring for their scholarship award uh, breakfast, and the dean there told me that there's been this gigantic uptick, an explosion, really, of applications at J schools all over the country, not just at Columbia. And I know you're thinking, oh, great. <laughs> Young people young, brilliant people after my job. But the good news about, <laughs> about the fire hydrant of news now is that there are plenty of stories. There's, a, there's a more than enough going around. And, and we, your burgeoning audience, we need every single story covered with care and ingenuity and relentless pursuit, because everything counts. Everything counts, man. Like in a Chuck Close painting, you know, every single distinct pixel, given a little distance, 
all taken together, is going to paint the truth and a portrait of our time right now. Thank God for you. However, your business is very bad for my business. <laughs> I have many, many friends who say, you know, I just don't go to the movies anymore. I don't even watch TV. I just, oh my God. <laughs> Did you see what happened today? <laughs> and there has never been a more exciting, exhausting, and dangerous time to be an investigative journalist than now, especially, of course, for women. And I say, of course, because we do recognize the special cocktail of venom and ridicule, which is always tinged with sexual threat, that's served up online for women, any woman in any profession, who stands up to tell the truth. I revere the people who do this, because I am not a naturally brave person. I think standing up in front of a thousand people who are smarter than me and presuming to tell them anything is nauseating, and I would rather be home watching Rachel, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do know something about real terror. The two times in my life when I was threatened and dealt with real physical violence, I learned something about life that I wouldn't have known otherwise. And I was lucky because my instincts served me well. In one instance, I played dead and waited until the blows stopped, watching like people say you do from about 50 feet above where I was beaten. <clears throat> and in the second instance, someone else was being abused, and I just went completely nuts and went after this man. Ask Cher, she was there. Uh, and the thug ran away. It was a miracle. But I was changed uh, by these events on a cellular level because women do know something particular about coming to the danger place. We come to it disadvantaged through the many millennia preceding our present moment. And because of our vulnerability, we anticipate danger. We expect it. We're hyper alert to it. We have the 360 on the whole room. We have, they say, measurably more acute hearing. We have a better sense of smell. We notice details, what people are wearing, their tics and their peculiarities. This comes in very handy in investigative journalism, but also in acting. I just finished a movie about journalism. It's about a time in which, in the late 60s and early 70s, when there were very few women in journalism at all. Meg Greenfield was the only woman in the editorial room at the Washington Post. It was a time not long after Nora Ephron, fresh out of Wellesley and running the paper there, interviewed at Newsweek and was told women are are not reporters. You can be a researcher or an assistant, a secretary, copy editor maybe, but a reporter, reporters are male. That wasn't that long ago. So tonight I'd like to salute the special bravery with which, for instance, Rachel Nichols dug into Floyd Mayweather's repeated battery of women on the eve of his hot ticket fight when nobody wanted to hear about domestic violence. And I applaud, just to name the few that I was reading today, Jody Cantor, Megan Tui, 
Kara Buckley, Milena Rizik, Maggie Haberman, Stephanie McCrumman, Beth Reinhardt, Alice Kreitz, Yamish Alcindor, Masha Gessen, Julia Ayafi, I'm not working, so I'm reading a lot. <laughs> Katie Benner, Emily Steele, Arwa Damon, there's so many, there's just so many. Great, great women right now. <laughs> And I'd like to pay tribute to the ones who have paid the hardest price for their questions this year. Daphne Caruana Galizia, Kim Wall, Miroslava Breach, Tatiana Felgenhaar. Despite what is a poisonous atmosphere for the press in this country, very few journalists are harmed here for doing their jobs, but it's a different story in Mexico. Five journalists have been murdered there just this year alone. Across the border from Texas in the state of Chihuahua, being an independent reporter can be a death sentence. Our next awardee, Patricia Mayorga, has paid a terrible price for her work. Just this year, her friend and colleague was murdered, and she herself was threatened but CPJ uh, gave her, allowed her to flee, gave her a safe house, and she is still in exile right now. In recognition of her commitment to a free press in Mexico and throughout the world, it's my great honor to present the International Press Freedom Award to Patricia Mayorga. <laughs> 